I had to stream. Hi. Hi, everybody. How are you? I have some really exciting news for you. Let me go over to brand and do mating matters. Let's promote the pod. Why not? Uh, how's everybody doing? Let me know where you are. I have to put my glasses on for Instagram because you guys are way over there. Uh, tell me where you're watching from. Phoenix. Hi, Jeff from Phoenix. How are you? And over here on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Hi, Carlos. Where are you? Hi, Bunny Cara. How are you? Where are you? Tell me where you're. Huntington Beach. Hello, Huntington Beach. How are you? Uh, Pasadena. Hi, Linda from Pasadena. Um, Santa Clarita. Hi, Rick from Santa, Santa Clarita. Okay, everybody. So today I had Corona. Hello, Rodney from Corona. How are you? Uh, Pompano Beach, Florida. Hello, Florida. How nice. I wonder if it's as hot there as it is here. California is not normally this hot, but boy, is it hot right now. Uh, hi, Steve from Beverly Hills. Agora Hills. Bunny's in Agora Hills. Oxnard. Hi. Hello, Oxnard. How are you? Um, so, uh, I had a really long work day, really long. If any of my students are watching, you saw me bright and early teaching at 7.30 this morning. Uh, but uh, hello, Renee from DC, how are you? Uh, so I've been, hi, Karen from Ottawa, how are you? You don't have to tell me where you are, I know where you are, unless you're not in Ottawa and traveling or somewhere else. Um, anyway, so I taught online Zoom class at 7.30 and I gotta say, it's not such a bad thing. Then I drove to record in the valley. Uh-oh. How come a call is coming in? Jonesy. Decline that. There we go. There was a phone coming into my phone. We have to figure out how to stop that when I'm doing a live. Um, anyway, so then I shot some commercials for Consumer Attorney Marketing Group. See, that's why I have all the makeup on. See the lashes. Yeah, crazy, right? I have the lashes on for that. All the schmutz on my face. Um, and, uh, oh, hi, Gary's here too. Hi, Gary Joffrey, how are you? Uh, hi, George, how are you? Tell me where you guys are. I like to know where people are. So um, anyway, then, so I shot, uh, taught at 7.30 in the morning online, then shot commercials, then came back, and then I had to do a podcast, had to. It was lovely. I did a podcast with a former hockey player. His name is Brooks Like. And he played for a bunch of teams. And now he has a podcast with iHeart called How Men Think. He seems very introspective for an alpha male. Uh, anyway, it was great to do that podcast. And then he taped something for Mating Matters. And then Joan says, with her friend Greta, I'm hungry. And I realized they hadn't really eaten all day. So we went to one of my favorite places. They do not pay me to say this. Blaze Pizza. And I just picked up my keto pizza. And the reason why I love Blaze Pizza is because they have a keto crust. Hi, Jenny from SoCal. Tell me where you are. Uh, yeah, who needs airlines when my eyelashes can just fly me there? Maria, are you in Costa Rica now? Wow, we love Costa Rica. Um, so anyway, yeah, here's my keto pizza. And I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to eat it while we're doing the live stream. And here's what I want to do with this live stream. Because as you know, I didn't promote it. I didn't make my little... Instagram graphic. I didn't do anything this week. I'm just disorganized. I was busy. I was busy working. Uh, I have a glass of wine too. And don't laugh. Yes, I put my white wine on ice. It's just how I am. Okay. Uh, gonna have my pizza and wine. So what I thought we would do is why don't you just send me your relationship questions? Anything, anything you want. I will tell you the subject matter of the podcast for How Men Think. We were doing about dating during COVID and the relationship stress that's happening during COVID. And uh, it's very stressful for a lot of people because whenever there's a crisis, it's kind of a make or break time, right? For relationships. So um, those relationships that were a little bit vulnerable before we went into the crisis, falling apart. Other relationships are realizing, I know red wine is better, Robert, except to get headaches. I even get headaches from this. I can only do one now. Something, it's insulin resistance. Um, Eastern Iowa. Oh, hello, Eastern Iowa. That is far away. Uh, people eating on camera is a real thing. Is it? People do eat on camera? All right. So uh, I'm gonna sit here and look and read for a change and see if you have any relationship questions while I chew my keto blaze pizza. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
I'm looking for a question. Any questions? Um, yeah, you're just joining me for dinner is what you're doing. What is the variety of wine? I like uh, Sancerre's, a Sancerre, a nice Sancerre. Um, mm. Yeah, I was talking about relationships during COVID. It's a make or break time, right? Because we realize that relationships are ultimately an exchange of care. That care can take many forms. Oh, Renee, that's a good question. I'm gonna put it up on screen. The crust is keto. I don't know. They said it's only six grams of carbs. I must have almond flour, coconut flour, cauliflower, a lot of flowers. Um, okay, so Renee's got a question. How do you get over heartbreak? Okay, I have a couple really good bits of advice for getting over heartbreak. One is, number one, you must unfriend, stop following, disengage with all digital media. And if friends of yours are mutual friends and they're posting pictures of your ex, then unfollow them for a while or just take a break, right? Because in the olden days, when you broke up with somebody, you just didn't go to the gym at the same time or went to a different dry cleaners. You just never saw them because you got them out of mind. But you stay in pain longer when you're constantly reminded and seeing this person digitally. That's the most important thing. Secondly, surround yourself. Oh, oh, that's a good question. It'll come next, okay? The so the so fly diva. I have a really good answer for that too. Um, uh, so surround yourself by people who love you just for you so that you can keep your ego strength st strong and you can remember how lovable you are. Um, you know, you've heard the saying, the best way to get over somebody is to get under somebody else. I don't really recommend rebound relationships like that. Um, because you're just delaying the pain is what you're doing. You're giving yourself like a little drug. I mean, sex and love, the best drug we have. Mm. Okay, here's the question. It's not a relationship question, but I like it. This is not a relationship question, says the SoFly Diva, but I'm a psychology undergrad student. Is it best to get a master's after PsyD or PhD? Depends what you wanna do with it, right? So if you want to be in a clinical practice and see patients, you can get a master's and a marriage and family therapy license. You can get a PsyD, you can get a PhD. If you want to do research, you need to have a PhD. If you want to teach at the college level, you pretty much need a PhD. But with a master's, you can do all kinds of counseling and school counseling and all that kind of stuff. So it just depends what you think you might want to do. Okay, up here on Instagram, they say, how do you find a right mate? I always get attracted by someone who's unhealthy. And <clears throat> if they're healthy, I feel suffocated. <laughs> mm. You've told me so much about yourself right there. So remember, the key to a healthy relationship is not finding the right person. It's learning relationship skills. And so many of us have attachment injuries, not our fault, it happened in our early lives when our brains were developing. And so we go back to the scene of the crime and we keep picking mates who will reactivate some of our old pain. Oh my gosh, Ken Ken's there. Hi, Carrington, my daughter came on first. So she'll probably disappear and go. Oh, she, no, she wrote, hi, mom. She's in San Francisco, but she's moving back here soon. Uh, so the answer is to do some therapy, to work on yourself, to figure out what is your attachment style. Ask yourself why you're attracted to people who hurt you. You know, I, I used to say, and I wrote a, one of my first books was called The Boyfriend Test, and it's really a book about boundaries and choices. And it was like, there's this common denominator between all the bad boys I ever dated. Me, I'm the common denominator. I picked him, right? Oh, Antonio, I like what you wrote. Uh, Antonia, sorry, I don't know, my glasses are not so great and the lights are bright. Antonia, uh, hi, Dr. Wendy, your podcast keeps me company while I run. I'm in New York City. Oh, she's a matchmaker and dating coach. And I find I'm very analytical about my own dating life. And I often get in my own way. It's a lot easier to help others and not myself. Any insight on how to separate the two? Well, I kind of have the same, I don't want to call it a problem. Antonia, it's not a problem. It's called using your prefrontal cortex to make good choices for yourself and using insight to look inside yourself. Um, you know, love is a delusion, the early stages of love. And one time when I was in graduate school, one of our professors asked, if a patient came to you saying that they were newly in love, should you treat them out of this delusion? The answer, of course, is no. 
because love is the best drug we have. And I think Antonia's question is, is it possible to stop thinking and start feeling and let yourself fall into that delusion? Yeah, after you analyze enough to make a good safe choice for yourself, right? Uh, oh, Bunny, that's a good question. Bunny's question is, why do people always like mu music from their younger years? Did you hear me talk about this on my radio show at one point? So there's research to show that when you're exposed to stuff when you were younger, everything, food, music, decorating, news, etc., your cells get a little younger. They remember, you have cellular memory. And so plenty of people feel comforted by music earlier on, but some people get attached to music like, in their formative like teenage and college years because that's when their sexuality the hormones were high and um and so as a result it can help improve your sex drive it actually can by listening to music that you know were big hits when you were very randy uh okay so chris christini the mintini christine to the mintini look how cute you are cutie patootie reading the 30 day love detox right now. And I need more, any plans for more books. Okay. So here's the deal. The 30 day live love talk detox, in my opinion, wasn't titled appropriately. Cause you can tell it's not about getting over a broken heart. Is it? And I think the title that I had picked for it was something like either love 2.0 or, um, how to find love in a high supply sexual economy or something. They didn't like that. So the publisher put this title on it. And as a result, it didn't sell so well. I mean, it did okay, but not as well as it was supposed to. So it's hard for me to get a traditional book deal now, but what I'm working on, because if you all please subscribe to Mating Matters podcast, get those numbers up, then I'm gonna write a book called Mating Matters that is filled with lots of great research. That's gonna be, you know, my. 12 best episodes, and then some, all kinds of additional new research. Uh, so that's the next book, and I will self-publish that on Amazon. So that's the next place is Mating Matters. But in order to do that, I got to get the numbers up. So you got to subscribe. Who? Um, it's keto. I'm okay. You got to subscribe to Mating Matters podcast wherever you get your podcast. Okay. Um, I see that. Okay, so the keto crust is a little dry, I swear. Almond flour, coconut flour, cauliflower, mm -hmm. um, corn metallica asks, if you don't like your glasses, why not take them off and straighten your hair? Because if I take my glasses off, I can't read. Um, thank you, M maybe Morgan. I love meeting matters. Um, I'll all fight up on episodes. All caught up. I think you mean you're all caught up on episodes. We have new ones coming. Um, someone asked me what happened to Dr. Laura. I, I never met her. She uh, was on KFI years before me. Uh, question, besides COVID-19, how many Americans are choosing not to date? Well, Cam, some new research that I just talked about on my show on Sunday. 50% uh, of singles don't even want a relationship. Um, oh, your boyfriend listened to Mating Matters? That's pretty cool. I mean, I actually have more male followers than women on Mating Matters because they like the science of it, right? Um, yeah, but Jenny, even if you've been married 40 years, there's one called The Secret Lives of Super Attachers where we learn about who are these people that stay attached for so long. So I think you'll like it. Um, okay, so guy, Corn Metallica, I love you, but you fill up my feed with too many comments and I don't wanna to have to block you. So I'm just saying, there's your warning. Just look and listen, okay? And don't write too much right now. Um, so supposedly 50% of Americans don't wanna, single Americans don't even want a relationship and don't wanna date. So why would that be? Uh, well, you don't need a relationship anymore um, to procreate. There are lots of places to get sperm and egg. That's the first thing. Secondly, you don't need a relationship for economic survival. Well, I mean, patriarchy is still keeping women a little poorer and keeping capital out of their hands. I actually had a uh, telephone conversation this week with a female mortgage banker who was like, you know, people kind of look down on me because I'm young and I'm a girl. I'm like, listen, you're doing the most important work of feminism, girl. You're putting capital 
in the hands of women. That's frontline worker. That's so important. That's the most important key to freedom. So um, those are all the reasons why people aren't having relationships. Okay, any other relationship questions while we're here? What are you eating? Oh, you must come on late. Where's the top, the box top? It's keto, it's Blaze Pizza. And it's a uh, crust, I don't know. It's got peppers, mushrooms, basil, tomato, cheese. I just had a long day. So if you're late coming on, I apologize. I haven't eaten all day. Well, I'll go, I gotta, you know, do it. I'm just putting Robert's thing up because I like his mask. And he says the word science. It's one of my favorite words. Well, I think my favorite word is probably think closely followed by feel. I think we all need to become aware of our own feelings mm. and more empathetic to other people's feelings, I think. Hello, Carolyn from Tennessee. Nice to see you. Uh, any question? Oh, where was I last Wednesday? You're never gonna believe this. I literally forgot it was Wednesday. It happens. Um, it's just like, I was home too. I just forgot to come up to my home studio and do my live stream. Forgot what day of the week it was. COVID's doing that. It's making everything blend in. Here, Corn Metallica, I'll put you up with that question. So you can see, there you are. Um, there's a good question, Rodney. Is it a bad idea to rush into moving in together? Depends. Depends on how much relationship experience you've had. Depends on what age you are. Depends on what you want out of this relationship. The research shows that people who move too quickly and live together have the highest breakup rate. You know, they're less likely to get married if that's what they want, right? So really you have to think about your relationship goals. I mean, rushing to move in together can be like heading into a train wreck. Um, or it could be, well, you know, I never planned to be with the person longer than a year anyway. So that worked out fine. I saved on rent. Uh, that's what? Oh, you're responding to somebody else. Um, any other questions? Oh, hello from India, Sanjay. Where in India are you? Are you near Munish? Munish from GoWeb99, who takes care of all my websites. Mm. Okay, Maria, let's get into this. Tools to heal after breaking up with a narcissistic person. Yeah, um, it's rough because narcissists, particularly if they're malignant narcissists, do a lot of gaslighting and really can be toxic and beat up your self-esteem because they literally, they criticize you so much and make you feel like such a bad person that you start to believe it after a while. Um, I think you know, doing the work of asking, you know, with a therapist, asking yourself, you know, why, what was it that you were getting from that person? Why did you believe their false external personality? Because the underbelly of all narcissism, of course, is self-loathing. They hate themselves so much that they have to create this external personality that's likable to many, the life of the party or whatever, but they tend to be critical of others because God forbid anybody has a similar thing to what they loathe in themselves, they go and attack it to push it away. So just know it takes time and practice. Um, Cam, thank you for the lively podcast on Sunday, my show. Uh, should I keep pursuing someone who ghosted me? Should I knock on his door? <laughs> I hope you're joking. No, he owes me going out. You're joking, right? No, if someone ghosts you, that's communication. Do not, that's called stalking if you go and knock at their door. No, please don't. If somebody ghosts you, they're actually communicating to you, which is I'm not into you, don't come around me, or maybe you even make me feel frightened. Okay, please don't. Somebody says, what's the psychology behind the people who don't believe COVID is real? I'll tell you the psychology behind people who don't believe COVID is real. They, um, have larger uh, fear centers in their brain. 
And they are so afraid of COVID. There's two extremes. There's the one with the large fear center who's hiding in quarantine and won't go anywhere and they're terrified of it. And there's the other one who can't even tolerate as frightened as they are. So they have to say, it's crap, it's not true, or the media invented it, or it's a political ploy or whatever. Because if they had to actually tolerate the fact that we are in a global pandemic, it would be too hard for them. So they don't, right? Uh, any more questions? What do we got over here? Any questions? Uh, request to be live with me. No, we don't do that. Who knows what you could say if you came on live. Uh, although my daughter, Carrington, did you leave me? I would put you on live. How long do you wait for a guy to respond to a text? I have a four hour rule. Oh, you are tough. You have a four hour rule? You don't know their life. They could be busy. They could be at the hospital bed beside their mother for six hours. Don't cut them off that fast. And the reason why I say that is because it's less about how long. It tells me the fact that you're counting how long has to do with your anxiety about being able to tolerate the weight. You see, the beginnings of relationships are all about uncertainty, vulnerability, and tolerating the unknowing. No definition, what are we, right? And so those early stages are so tenuous, they're so vulnerable, and your brain is trying to protect itself from heartbreak. So it's trying to go like, okay, four hours, didn't text me back? you're gone, right? Because you're thinking if I give him the boot, then I don't get to be hurt, right? So there's no, oh, this is a good question. It'll come next. Um, there's no um, rule on it. It's really about what you can tolerate and what is the content of their text when they text you back. And are they only texting you? Or are they getting on the phone and connecting with you? Are they meeting you in the real world? Masks, social distance, you know what I'm saying? Um, okay. Uh, oh, Christine, this is a sensitive question. She says, what's the likelihood that I'll follow my mother's toxic dating habits? Well, let me explain something. Our model for a relationship, our roadmap, our blueprint, whatever you want to call it in our brain is based on a combination of three relationships. The relationship we had with our mother, the relationship we had with our father and the relationship we witnessed them doing, right? Between the two of them or multiple relationships, et cetera. And so it becomes, they layer on top of each other to become a kind of idea of this is normal, right? And so the answer is, I can't give you a percentage, but I can tell you that the more aware you are of this and the earlier you're aware, then the better off you're gonna be. Okay, so be aware of your of what's happening early on and try to make different choices from her. Um, and the fact that you have this concern is good. It shows that you have great awareness. Um, question, do different types of crises affect relationships differently? Well, every relationship is completely different. It's a snowflake, man. It's its own unique thing. And by the way, when you're looking at people's relationships from the outside, they may look unfair, but I'm telling you, it's an exchange of care. The care can take many forms, right? Financial care, sexual care, domestic responsibility care, emotional support care, physical support when someone's sick, all kinds of care. And when from the outside, it may not look fair, but if both partners stay in it, it feels fair to them. So yeah, different types of crises affect relationships differently, but depending on people's coping skills, right? Some people are very resilient. Some people have great coping skills to stress other people lose it. Then I also want to say that during the crisis, if you've got a good solid relationship going into it, cut them some slack. We're in a pandemic. We're lonely. It's COVID time, folks. Plenty of people are quarantined. They're not seeing each other. I'm sitting here drinking with 3,000 people who can't really talk back. Mm. I mean, you are talking back. Okay, give me a good question while I take another bite. Who's got a good question for me? Um, I'm watching Facebook, YouTube. Christine, is that YouTube you're on? I can't figure out what that icon is from my end. Mm. Um, that's Twitter, I think, right? D-Stringer Guitar. Mm. 
from Instagram. Why is online dating so frustrating and wishy-washy? I'll tell you why. A couple of reasons. One is people actually get some emotional satisfaction just from all those texts, right? So it's sort of a quasi relationship in their head that gives them some degree of emotional support. So they're kind of like, you know, why do I have to even get dressed and go on a date? I got all these people talking to me that give me this emotional support. The other thing is we as humans suffer from paradox of choice. The more choice the human brain is given, the less likely we are to make a choice. And when we do make a choice, the less likely we are to value that choice because we're always thinking about the bigger, better deal that's out there. So as a result, dating apps biohack your brain because dating apps are not designed to help you find a partner. Dating apps are designed to get you addicted to the dating app. So as a result, the, it throws you into this bowl of like all these people and you're texting and texting and it's fun and whatever. Um, I'm just going to read that question before it goes away. If it goes to me, then there's no closure. You know, come back on his own. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Abba Kinney, I'm going to mention that in a minute. So what do you have to do on those dating apps? You need to text with two people at once get one on the phone and then focus on that one until you want to throw them back in the ocean, the fish that you're fishing for, right? Don't sit there talking with 10 people. It's not going to work. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, okay. I'm going to get to this in a minute, Lauren, but first there was a question over here about he ghosted me. There's no closure. Okay. This is your issue. Not his. I just want to say, I can't remember who you've asked this. Um, and yes, it does allow him to keep the door open so he can come back whenever he wants. That's why guys like don't break up. Girls break up. They make it a whole big thing. In fact, a guy will stop calling a woman for two weeks and she will call him to break up with him. Like you are broken up. You get that, right? Anyway, so women do the breaking up. Men sit there and go, I'm not into it right now, but I'm not going to like let it go completely because you never know, <clears throat> might have a bad week and there you go. Uh, next question. This relates to a previous question. What is a good way to address if I'm usually the one who texts my partner first? Do you mean, and thank you for posting Black Lives Matter. Um, do you mean uh, that you meet someone on a dating app and you do the texting first? If it's Bumble, the women have to do the texting first. If it's other apps, I would say, um, I mean, people hate it when I say this, but it's really true. Sperm chases egg, not the reverse. So don't chase in the early stages. You need him to make that first move, except on Bumble where you have to, you know, and you know, you can come up with just a simple thing like, oh, this is a backwards app, but okay, hello, and see what they come up with or make a little joke or something. Um, another question. Uh, sorry, I can't read them all. Oh, Cam, I don't know about this. Will someone please explain? What's the deal? The only fans craze on Instagram, possible mating matters topic. Would someone please tell me what only fans mean? Like what it's, you only talk to fans or you only date fans or what? Uh, I don't know. Somebody give me more information on that. Uh, I don't know that craze on Instagram. Maybe I'm not part of it. Um, oh, someone talked about on Instagram about I have a backup. You know what? We all have backup mates. Every human being on the planet. If you don't have a backup mate, evolutionary psychologists would say you risk falling out of evolution's chain. We all have somebody in our life that we think, well, you know, if something happened to my partner, maybe, right? Uh, but that doesn't mean you should dangle it in front of your partner to try to get their attention and be uh, try to get their jealousy going. That's silly. That means you're insecure. Keep your backup mate in the back of your own little mind. Hmm. Any more questions before I go and finish my pizza? I'm literally having a pizza party with you guys. It's so weird. Um, okay. OnlyFans is a club for NASCAR fans. What? Only a truly empathetic spends her Wednesday night helping. Oh, Jenny. Thank you for saying that. It's really nice of you to give me a compliment. I'm going to post it for a second. Um, well, it's good for me because 
it stays, it keeps my ear to the ground of what people are struggling with and what they're dealing with in life. So that's why I like to be here. Um, before we go, everybody wave goodbye. I will see you remember every Sunday from four to six live on KFI AM 640 or live on the iHeartRadio app. If you miss the show, it always ends up on the iHeartRadio app. It's called the Dr. Wendy Walsh Show. But in addition, wherever you listen to your podcasts, please subscribe to Mating Matters. Producer Brooke Peterson and I spend a great deal of time working on it. So, oh God, now you're even hearing me burp. Thank you so much. Um, I love you all. I say that to my students <clears throat> when I log off. I'm like, I love you all. I'll see you in my office. <coughs> Almond flour. Coconut flour. It's keto, this pizza. And it's a wee tad dry. I will say that. Anyway, thank you all for being here. I'm here every Wednesday from 6 o'clock uh, at 6 o'clock Pacific time. Have your questions ready. What else? I can't remember. Okay. Bye. Love you all. <laughs>